but the regionals once enjoyed the splendor of the palace. In 1897, the British invaded the ancient empire of Benin, sacked its government and monarch, above Varunwen Nobaisi, and looted its ivory and bronze artworks. Till date, families from the old kingdom still speak of their losses. I belong in part of the royal family of Benin, but I think more importantly as a Nigerian, I have a stake here because this is about our cultural artifacts. I'm an art historian and I know the value of this material culture. So I think what to do is to sensitize people. I'm almost also aware that people are not, are not really covered some of the history and the, the monumentality of the loss that we're talking about here. To remove 4,000, 3,000 to 4,000 artifacts from a particular culture is a great loss to Nigeria, particularly as these works are being shown in Europe and so much revenue is being made from gate takings at museums and publications postcards and books that have been written by foreign and foreigners who have access to these works, why the indigenous, those who actually own these works, uh, you know, uh, are not given the opportunity to see the works. After 113 years, the country is yet to recover its art pieces. The British who came in came on account of an overwhelming economic interest. That was what brought them into Benin in the first instance. So what I have here is a monumental installation of 1,000 heads, comprises 1,000 heads as a reference to the way the British soldiers packed the artifacts which they had looted from the bed chamber of the, of the palace of the king, the storehouses of the king, and put them outside before they were shipped to, to England. So what I have here are ancestral heads uh, in honor of the kings and ancestral heads in honor of the queen mother. And we have a number of plaques because a lot of plaques were removed. And if you go to the British Museum in London, you'll find you know, uh, hundreds of plaques arranged in the, in the exhibition uh, hall. And these were works that were taken away. So these works are done in basically terracotta. And, but the works that were removed are in more precious material like bronze. Uh, we have a number of them that are destroyed, broken, uh, but they are displayed in that way because that was intentional because... On the third day of occupying the palace, the British forces set ablaze the palace of the king and some of the works were trapped in the fire. So you find that some of the ivories were actually burnt. We've taken away the valuable things and now we are left with photocopies and pictures, images of, of, of Benin art in catalogs and books and publications and postcards. And I have read over them signifying that it was a very bloody exercise. In fact, one of the accounts by the British says that the British forces opened fire on the Benin defenders who fell like knots from the top of trees. So the context of the removal of very valuable artifacts from Benin was a very bloody exercise. Among the stolen works is the Festac mask, which is securely locked away in the British Museum. In 1977, when the Festival of Arts and Culture was to take place, the government wrote to the British government to repatriate Quinidia Mask, but the British government gave conditions. First, they wanted a huge amount of money. At the end of the day, they refused on the ground that they were not sure of the environment in which it would be kept. Now, that must be considered as a gratuitous insult that those who steal your property are now talking about your inability to keep them. Who is guilty? They say the man that didn't keep his things in a proper environment or the one that steals it. But since 2007, we've been in constant dialogue and correspondence with the British Museum on the need to return the mask, either on the basis of legality or morality. Indeed, we are so desirous of having it for the celebration of the 30th anniversary of Festac. Unfortunately, the British refused on the ground that, uh, yes, he's been with us for some time. I'm quoting the director of the British Museum, uh, Neil McGregor, who said that instead of talking about retrieval of stolen artifacts, we must try to look for other areas of cooperation, such as what they are trying to do with the Ford Foundation in upgrading or rehabilitating the National Museum in Lagos. In my view, that was evasive. It didn't address the question. It begs the issue. The issue of repatriation of stolen artworks has attracted the attention of major international organizations like UNESCO. 
UNESCO has organized many conventions which aimed at discouraging countries from stealing artworks of other countries. Nigerian government is signatory to the conventions that prohibit both import and export of cultural property. Several requests have been made by the government to British Museum, Ethnology Museums in Germany and Austria to return the stolen artworks. The Urban of Benin has sent delegations to some of these countries all to no avail. Many of these countries are holding on to the works on the grounds that the UNESCO 1970 Convention does not cover works of art stolen before 1970. Most Africans, including us, are now asking that UNESCO amend this convention to let the provisions in that convention cover stolen artifacts before 1970. The justification that those who are holding on to African works of art now are having is that those works had been stolen before the 1970 UNESCO Convention. So UNESCO must now be advised to go back and insist that once a work of art is stolen and the claim of ownership is authenticated because it's so easy, then the custodian, the current temporary custodians of those works must release them forthwith. That is our position in CBAC. Stakeholders are unrelenting in their quest for a return of all the stolen artworks. They are also asking the federal government to step up action in that regard.